Good evening and welcome to the thirteenth part of this overly detailed journey through Elden Ring. I am your host tonight, Death. We find ourselves now in the Tombsward Catacombs. It has recently come to my attention that the skeletal remains of the catacombs' denizens no longer remain, but instead wander the halls of their ancient burial home, restless, ceaseless, and aggressive. I know not what power drives them, though many tales abound claim it to be the reigning leaves and the reaching roots of the herb tree and the old tree that came long before, while others claim the source feeding this undeath is that of the shattered Elden Ring. The details of this transgression must be laid bare so those responsible can be held accountable, but for now the true name of the transgressors matters little. The dead must be laid to rest once more, for I deliver their souls to the gates beyond myself, and only I may decide whether that deliverance is to be undone. So let it be done once more. And what is this abomination I see before me? A monument to the undeath, sewn into the creatures roaming these halls, looming over a mechanical contraption, and wearing my garb no less. I must find whomever this statue represents and relieve them of it. Too long have I been apart from my robes. I will end the undeath of that one as well as the others, and pull what is mine from the still remains. But the task at hand is still so contraption seems to have made way for ending the one that lords over the undying of this tomb. Let it be done. Let us see how the lord of this abominable dungeon fares against death incarnate. Not well, I should think. A mere shade. A mere shade reduces death to such a state. An infuriating prospect to say the least, but in the grand picture it matters little. I cannot be removed from my mortal coil, for I haven't won. I do not remain still. I do not cease, and I do not ask for obedience. I bring release to others, be it sweet or bitter. I demand my namesake of you when I deem it appropriate, and I brook no arguments. I am the Dark Embrace. I am the Omega to all Alphas. I am the unending end. I am death. Another foe is defeated, and yet another restless soul clings to me. How many more of these pitiful spirits are there? Perhaps some of the spirits. 
spirits that have wandered from my own realm can be found in these lands. If I am to command said apparitions, I'll need the tools attuned to this world. Loath as I am to do so, it would seem bartering with denizens is an unavoidable necessity. All right, twin maidens, I shall purchase your summoning bell. I now travel to unseen parts of this land in search of a flask called the Wondrous Physic. While my time in this world is meant to be utilized, bringing myself to its undying inhabitants. And no matter my power, it is inevitable they will succumb. It may still behoove me to gain some strength and aid. I seem to lack the prowess I've grown accustomed to while calling other undeath-tainted worlds. And I would see this task done in a timelier manner. A strange occurrence, these monoliths bearing details of your surroundings. It is a wonder the map is always available to me, given how open it is to grasping hands. Perhaps the obelisk emits a different map for each individual requiring one. This broken church fits the description of the flask's location. Could be that we also find a sacred tear in here, as the similarly shambled temples we've encountered contained them. Very good. Now let us see what the exact nature of the boon this flask offers is. The Flask of Wondrous Physic is a relic of the Physic Chemists, Priests of the Erd Tree, which harnesses the powers of crystal tears that may only form after the passage of many moons. Various special effects are bestowed upon the drinker, dependent on the specific mixture of crystal tears. The flask may be replenished by resting at a site of grace. Basins placed at the base of minor Erd trees throughout the lands between collect their crystallized tears. The locations of more power, then. And what feat is the Crimson Crystal Tear capable of? Restores half of one's maximum health. I suppose one could have deduced that from the name similarity to the flask I've been using. And now there is one whose death is long overdue. I have been bested by this tree sentinel in the past, but all that ends this day. Tonight your undeath becomes simply death. While I do find the use of a shield somewhat appalling, I must admit, given the current circumstances, it is likely intelligent choice for me to make. The two of you may whinny and grunt all you like, but your demise is a certainty. It is only a matter of time before I enact my existence upon you. Ha! 
Rah! Do you feel it now? The walls closing in. No rebirth after this. No return from death's final blow. Your clock is nearing its final tick, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. The final blow is upon you. With the end so near, the prey becomes vicious, like a wild animal backed into a corner. It is only what should be expected from you in this moment, I suppose. You've lived so long without the fear of a permanent death. It's only natural that you'd feel like the world itself is collapsing. To be honest, I could finish this now. But though I am known as a silent profession, I do so enjoy the final moments of an immortal losing their immortality. Oh, all right. Let us conclude then, shall we? Now that that has been handled, it is time to grow our arsenal once again. But for now I bid you farewell, viewer, and death will see you again in part 26 of this overly detailed playthrough of Elden Ring.